Let's talk a little aeronautical decision making, which is defined as a systematic approach to the mental process used by pilots to consistently determine the best action in given circumstances. Essentially, this is the flow of your brain that tries to come up with the best decisions when you have to make a critical yes or no or stay or go as a pilot. And a lot of different ways how this ADM applies. Like I said, go or no go decisions. It's so much better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. How about in flight? Do you want to continue this flight? Should you divert? Um, dealing with passengers. That's another stress point. It's also an issue. Their expectations versus the reality of the pilot or the airplane or the weather that day. And the same thing goes for students and clients. If you're a professional pilot, these are people who are non-aviators trying to be part of the decision-making process. In reality, they should be considered, but they should not be part of the process. How about other crew members that you might be flying with? A lot of times it's a collective decision, even though one person is the PIC ultimately. Um, this is a group decision based on a lot of different factors. And also, I think the main thing is for new and inexperienced pilots and even experienced pilots, anybody can use this mental flow, which I'm about to break down here. You kind of run through what I'm about to share, and it should help you make the best decision every time in a bunch of totally different circumstances here. So this is the total equation. This is everything you're adding up usually to get your answer when you make an aeronautical decision. You're adding up the pilot, the aircraft, the environment, and the mission. And I'll go through each one of these individually. Like, for example, the pilot or even the crew, I guess you could say. Illness. This is something only you as the pilot know. I mean, generally, you can look at somebody, you can size them up. Do they look well? Are they feeling well? Are they acting normal? Are they acting okay? But only you know if you're fit to fly on a given day. And in other aspects of life, you may be able to force it if you're not feeling completely well. But in flying, we know the demand that it can take, especially based on some of the other aspects. Like, is it a, is it a clear in a million day or are you flying in hard IMC? That's going to make a difference on how well you feel and how well you perform on that day or night. Medication. You obviously know through the FAA that everything has to be approved that you're taking. But what about the effects of taking medication? Or if you're a person who missed your medication, how is that going to affect you throughout the day? and the course of a flight. Stress, I mean, certainly we know that affects individuals and things that happen in their outside life before they get into the airplane. Thankfully, a lot of times the airplane is a calming and soothing place to a lot of people because it's so normal and sterilized and it's separate from their, their actual lives. But just be very cautious about the mental, the mental framing and mindset of a pilot or of yourself as you hop in an airplane. Alcohol, for me, that's a zero tolerance thing. There are some limitations of, of how much can be in your system, but I don't think it's ever worth testing that out um, for not only a ramp check, but obviously the controllability and end results of safely flying an airplane. Um, and again, waiting. Maybe waiting is a better option than even playing it, playing it close. Waiting is always going to be the better option than, than trying to make or force something to happen. Fatigue. Now, we don't talk a lot about fatigue as much as we do like alcohol or being sick. But if you're fatigued enough, you're not able to make decisions almost as if you were drunk, right? So you want to make sure that your energy levels are going to be able to suffice. How about waking up super early for a flight? I know we've all done that. Getting home a lot later than you expected because the day just went long or the flight went long. Um, you just really want to be aware of of your energy levels before you even start the flight or as you go through a flight, if that's possible. Eating. So I'm safe is what you're seeing this all adds up to, but E is the eating here. Um, to make sure that you're hydrated, that you're nourished. So many times we've all been through a day where we meant to get lunch and we missed lunch. Now all of a sudden it's two o'clock, which turns into four o'clock and our flight finally leaves at five. Now it's dinner time and we're on a two and a half hour flight. So it's going to be eight o'clock before we even have the opportunity and we already missed lunch and dinner. And let's say you have to shoot an ILS down to 200 feet overcast, down to minimums. Like how, how are you going to physically, how will you physically be performing at that point if you're not right as a pilot? And not to mention currency and documents that you also need as a pilot. So go through all those. How am I as the pilot in this equation? Am I good? 
If that's the case, move on to the aircraft. This one's a little bit more structured. We know the whole uh, AVIATE acronym here, an annual, a VOR check uh, for instrument flight, 100-hour inspection, altimeter, pitot-static system, transponder, ELT, if the battery's been used for an hour or it's less than 50%. All airworthy airworthiness directives need to be complied with, placards installed, are all the documents present? Do you have all the required equipment for day or night or IFR or VFR flight? And do you have the landing light operational if this flight is for hire? So this one's a little more um, cut and dry. Again, with the pilot, there may not be concrete answers, black and white answers. With the aircraft, things generally either work or they don't work. So now you've considered two of the main things here, the pilot and the aircraft to be used in this flight, really the crew and the aircraft in this flight. Now you get to the environment. And 91, 103 and the FARs are all about the pre-flight action that you are, are responsible for undertaking before you hop in an airplane. But when I say environment of pilot, airplane and environment, I'm talking about all the things that are variables every single time, like the weather. It's never the same twice. Fuel requirements, usually not the same. Uh, weight and balance, they could always be different depending on what you're doing, what you're carrying. Alternatives and delays. Is there a weather delay? Are you flying IFR? What about your flight plan? Um, where could you land if the weather changes midway through your flight? What are the unexpected you have to prepare for? Runway usage, runway lengths at all the various airports. What about TFRs and NOTAMs and closures and things like that? So you're trying to get a general scope of the environment. What things do I feel comfortable about? What things am I not sure about here? Now, you're starting to really add everything up. You've already thought about the pilot and the aircraft. Now you're looking at the environment of, of, the, of the flight situation here. What am I getting myself into? And that brings me to the last thing here, the overall mission at hand. What is the relevance and importance of the actual mission at hand? Like, is the end result imperative? Are you carrying a sick person to get the care they desperately need in a timely fashion? Or are you just trying to go out and have lunch with your friend? Because if some of the other things are not right in pilot aircraft and environment, and especially here in mission, if there are enough things that just don't add up properly, isn't there another time or option that, that might be a better choice? So that's kind of how you, you arrive at a lot of these decisions. And point number three here is go up to the flight level 350 view. Take yourself up to 35,000 feet for just a second. Take yourself out of the situation. I know you wanted to go to lunch. I know you wanted to impress your friends. I know you wanted to take those photos with them. I, I, you had to be somewhere by a certain time. But <clears throat> is, is any of this ultimately going to change your life? If it doesn't happen today or it doesn't happen on time. Because I promise you this, there will always be if there will always be a better time than when things are not right. There will always be a better time when you feel safer, more secure, uh, the weather's better, the plane got looked at, whatever it takes to remedy the problem, there will always be a better time. Now, it's not to say that things are going to be perfect every single time, and I will get to that in just a second, but you're really trying to add up these four different elements, the pilot, the aircraft, the environment, and the mission. You add those up generally every single time, that gives you a complete scope of making the decision. Should I fly today? Should I not? Should I make this trip through weather? Should I not? You should feel confident in most of those categories, the pilot, the aircraft, the environment, and the mission. But I do want to clarify this. You shouldn't expect that every single time is going to be perfect. There may be a day where you're just a little bit tired. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing you to go fly if you really feel like it's unsafe. You're ultimately the PIC. But my point is that sometimes you may have to overcome small adversities to complete the mission at hand. But again, how valuable is your mission at hand? So consider this pilot aircraft environment and mission for every flight you do, I guarantee if you think about those things thoroughly, you will not regret the decisions that you make.